But yeah, today will be more about end-to-end uh, -end data pattern as code. Um, Hank presented it already where we think about using Git as a NoSQL database. Um, and this talk will be about that, but also about more of the implication of it, like how we got into that stage, so our V1 and then our V2. And um, yeah, today we just want to dive into that a bit, and it's going to be more like you guys hands on trying it out as well. So if you have your laptop, feel free to pull it out, and then we can we will walk you through some of the oh yeah some of oh, some of the things that uh, we have done there, um, and then you can try it out as well. But just to get things started, and who this person is here? So basically, yeah, it's Hung, the founder CEO, who's sitting there, and uh, me, Batin. Um, I'm doing the customer success team here in the US. Um, and yeah, today we'll just talk a bit about that. So if you have any questions, feel free to just like shout it or, or reach out. Um, but essentially, I think I want to start things off with like figuring out who's in the room. I mean, usually we talk to engineers a lot, but there may be founders, maybe analytics engineers, maybe other people. Um, and for that, I actually did prepare a Slido thing. And let me actually pull that up really quickly. Um, everybody just wants to quickly join on Slido. It's a Slido comment and you can just use this number and then fill this out. This would be great just for me to get kind of an understanding of, of who's in this room. Okay, we got a lot of other. Maybe we should have uh, added another option then. That's good to know. Okay, nice. Um, close this in just a second. Okay, everybody's other. Does anybody want to share what other means to them? Who put who put other? That's what you want to. Data, data governance. Okay, interesting. What are the other others in here? Uh, this, is person, so. in this person. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's good to know. Well, maybe we should have extended our choices a bit here. Maybe it's a bit biased. But good, good to know that it's others. Um, the next question is maybe also a bit biased, um, but it's interesting to see. I mean, we obviously have one bet here. But for us, um, there's this kind of point. I just want to see like, what, what people are thinking in this room. Um, the question is, do you believe that all in one data platforms can keep out their promise? Um, it's a bit of a double negative, but yeah. <laughs> Why do you it's so yeah. <laughs> To be fair, okay, yeah, <laughs> maybe I should have phrased it more directly. Um, so that no means you believe in keeping up their promises, okay? <laughs> yeah, 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 I, yeah. So you you believe in failure? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's a 50-50 split. Not bad, not bad. Um, last part, which is, what do you like to learn in this workshop? Um, this is a free form answer, I believe. If everything is set up correctly. Does that work? Maybe not. I'm not sure. Does it show up anything? New, that's always good. Okay. Great, I think I'll close it here. Um, yeah, so basically, and the reason I asked this is actually uh, there's ways to, to do this workshop, and I want to make sure it's also tailored to what like you actually want to get out of it. Um, it's going to probably maybe also just be a session where we talk about things and not too many things where we present, but going back to the presentation, I believe it's here. What I want to do today is essentially just walk you through a use case that we see quite often so you can get to see how the platform works for that use case in both ends. One, the we one that Hung presented where it's more about just enabling the business user to use the entire modern data stack in one tool. And then the second part is, um, as you can see here, the programmable data pipeline as code. Um, and we want to do this at the example of Raycon um, which is one of our customers, actually. I don't know, have you heard of Raycon before? It's like an earbuds company. 
um, e-commerce D2C. And essentially, their setup is they have a bunch of Google Sheets where they have all their ads data in there. Um, they pull it manually sometimes. Uh, maybe they use Funnel before that. And then um, later on, they actually use Python. So their analytics person um, just wrote some code to, to make sure to get the data together, transform it, and then they push it into Data Studio. Basically, there they just pick it up and use it. Um, and that was their setup. And they weren't actually um, happy with it at all. Um, and they were quite small. So it's one analytics person, um, not an, a massive engineering team that was able to do everything on their own. And they were looking at basically simplifying the entire process to get the head of marketing um, happy and then and, and make sure that everything works out. So at this example, I want to first look at how um, Y42 can empower business users to become data experts. And then really the second part where going away from the business user and more actually to the data and like expert and figuring out how the platform is trying to solve both ends and, and doing so as well. Um, so the first part is here, empowering business users to become data experts. And there are three parts that we wanted to achieve with this product, which is one, simplify the modern data stack. So this is um, making sure that you don't have to actually set up seven plus tools, which makes sense, I think, sometimes. But sometimes for a single analytics person, uh, it can be quite a lot. Um, the second part is shortest time to value. So figuring out how they can actually get up an entire data pipeline within maybe a couple of minutes. And then the last part is the full pipeline transparency. Um, to do that, I actually would want to give you access to the platform. And we can kind of do it like a, a walkthrough where you can try out some of the parts of the platform. And to do that, um, you have to visit it. This is also quite bad. And I think it would have to be mainly on the laptops. If you have a laptop that works, if not, um, no worries at all. Um, it's y42.com slash data council. And when you do this, I'm going to pull this up actually right now as well. You will be forwarded to this page. And this is basically our free trial page where you can get access to a platform for 14 days. So you can try it out afterwards as well. Um, just put your name and your email. And then you'll actually receive an email to activate your account. And you can um, try out the platform there. And otherwise, I will also just share how it would look like on our end. We're just going to give you guys a couple of minutes. Go back to the URL as well. Sorry, this is a bit hotter here. <laughs> Spend a lot of time looking for space cats. I'm going to pull it up at the same time. So I'm actually going to change this by setting. OK, so once you have activated, did you guys get to get the email already? Nothing yet. Were you able, able to fill out the form? Did that work, at least? Uh, maybe you have to check your spam, because I think sometimes. Oh, is that? Yeah, OK. <laughs> I think you have to check out your spam, that maybe we need to work on our deliverability. Um, but yeah, once you have that, it should send you to a link to activate it. <laughs> so uh, we got to fix that. I, I'm, I'm not going to take your data. Maybe we're going to take your data. Um, but no, this is uh, it's just, I think it should be fine to activate it. The others, were you guys able to get an email, activate things, the ones that are looking at this? Okay. I'll also log in and then walk you through what we would want to do today. So yeah, once you activate, you just have to sign in again. And then it will take a couple of minutes and actually load demo data into your account um, that you can then today work with as well. I'll zoom in a bit. Um, but you can also actually integrate some of your data. So this is actually hosted on our BigQuery. So usually when you set up Y42, you could choose to do BigQuery Snowflake um, as your background data warehouse. In this case, with the free trial, you would get basically the access to our BigQuery and store data on there as well. So if you do any of your data, feel free to delete it. We will make sure that everything is deleted after this as well. But um, you can go ahead and do that as well. Are you guys 
the people who, who are following along logged in already? No? Okay, actually I can. So who was able to get in? You got in, is it? No, no, I haven't Anybody else get access to it already? Is anybody in? Okay, you are in, okay. <laughs> I mean, we can also just all along uh, through the screen. Yeah, we could do that as well. Um, let's see, let me just generate one really quickly. Um, actually, do you have, I'll actually invite you all to the same organization, then you can just uh, play around there as well. Um, the same organization and in there you can then use the same stuff that we have here. Let's see. Did you guys receive the email yet? To get invited? Did it land into spam again maybe? <laughs> Oh, yeah, we could do that as well. So, actually, I'm going to set the password here. Okay.
Okay, I will just set an account and then give everybody access as well. So I will write it up here. Give me one second. So if you would like to um, if you'd like to log in, you can actually log in with I will pull up. If you go to y42.com, um, like this one here, I believe. Yeah. If you go to y42.com in here, and then you can just click in, click here, and then just insert Latin Tran plus, sorry, dot Tran plus free trial three at y42.com and the password is data console 2022 exclamation mark. Then you should be able to log in. Um, did you get access already through different means? Okay. So it's um, app dot y42.com. And then in here it's just Latin dot Tran at plus free trial three and y42.com and password is um, data council 2022 exclamation mark. Did that work for people? Cool, okay. So yeah, once you're in there, um, you will be able to see a whole bunch of organizations and you can go onto data council for now. Um, in there here, you should be able to, oh, I think I need to change just the user settings. I'm gonna sign in again. Yeah, in here you should be able to see the integrations one on I just set you as a um, manager. Got it. So when you click on integrate now, do you see these three data sources? Cool. So yeah, the first thing that I want to just go through is um, adding an integration. And as you can see here, um, if you follow along, you can just see the whole bunch of integrations and you can try out a Google Sheet if you want, want to uh, add words. Obviously, then like, don't choose any of the data that is maybe visible um, through other means. But in this case, um, you can then just, for example, see a whole bunch of things. So I'll test this. Um, so Google Analytics. And in this case, for example, you would just have to um, sign in with your email. I'll use my personal one because I have a throwaway Google Analytics account ba there, basically. And if you want to integrate, you can go ahead and just wait for a second, and then it will show up there as well. seconds um, and then in the other way you can already look at the existing data for example here in the Facebook one there's preloaded data and there you can find that do you guys see the the data set are those there cool yeah and in here for example this is a window into the data that you get when you integrate Y42 it's a Google Sheets like so you would just um, basically get a window into there you can see descriptive stats and so on so all of that is accessible there as well um, 
you can see summarization. So this is how Y42 basically works for a business user. You can see um, general stats. And the way you integrate and actually select tables here is, um, for example, I would select my account. And then I can go ahead and select tables that are in that account for Google Analytics. And there are a whole bunch of our, uh, integrations that we use right now, but with the new app that uh, Hang will show also in the second half of this, um, you'll get actually access to um, Fivetran, Airbyte, and so on as well, where you can uh, pull those into your orchestration um, and, and trigger out of uh, our airflow, basically. Sorry, trigger out of our orchestration or trigger any other airflow runs. So here, for example, this is where you can get all the data um, and you can select the columns that are involved there. Um, so this is how that would work. But for today's use case, if we think back to what Raycon did, they wanted to combine Google Ads and, and Facebook Ads. Um, we can go in and see there's these two data sets um, that are already in here. They have a whole bunch of data in there. Maybe they have spend, um, they have the campaign ID, the cost, and so on. And the next part in this whole journey would be to actually create a model that unifies this data. And there is one existing in here already um, that if you check out on, in the model tab, you can see how um, you have the UI model, which is the part where Y42 basically allows the business user to um, create SQL transformations without knowing SQL, without having to know SQL. Um, and if you want to, you can go ahead and just create a model yourself by clicking on the Add button here, either SQL and UI, and then we can, um, you can follow along. Is that working for you if you click on the Add button and create a model? Great. Here you can then see all the, all the nodes on the left. And for example, the first one would be to input a data set. So you would basically just pull in um, one of the input nodes, you click on them, and then you can select all the data sources and tables basically that you've created before. And in here we would, for example, select the Google Ads data from the Ad Performance Report. You get an, uh, an output overview, so this is a preview of everything that's in there, and then you can check it out as long as you basically just stay in this window, and if you save it, um, it stays as the input here. And then we have a whole bunch of transformations, and, and for this use case, for example, we can just select maybe the cost of it because we want to union the cost and make sure we have all the costs from different data sets in the same table, and in here in this fields node, so if you use that one, you can, um, for example, just choose the index and then the cost. And if you look at the output, um, every time you do something, it will also generate the output. You can see the add in there and the cost that's associated with it. So basically at every step of the transformation that you take, you get to basically view what you're doing already, similar to how you preview a query. And for example, for the Google Ads data, if somebody has worked with this kind of data before, um, one part that is usually tricky there is you have to divide it by a million because the cost is multiplied. Um, so it's per million. And then we, for example, have the functions node, which is a low code version um, for people who use Google Sheets, a lot of business users. You can just pull that functions node in, and there we have basically all kinds of transformations that you would know, both from uh, like Python, for example, or even in Google Sheets as formulas. And in here, for example, you can then create a new column that's called spend, where you divide the cost by a million. So you can go ahead and do that as well if you want to. Um, and then you will see that the data is manipulated and a new column is created that's called spend, where everything is divided by a million. So in this case, most of them have zero, but if you, for example, have it here, you'll get to see the spend. Um, yeah, and yeah. Yeah, it's in, in SQL, it'd be a select state, a statement. Yeah, so like it's select the certain columns that you have. And then functions is where you do um, your manipulation of the data, essentially. Um, the other part would be, so here, for example, we now have the Google data, um, and we would maybe also want to pull in the Facebook data. So 
So once you pull that in, we will do the same thing, just select a couple of fields in here. So you could do index again, and then in this case, you have um, other parts, which is called spend in Facebook. And again, if you click on, on output, you get to see um, the same thing that you did for Google. And in this case, it's actually the same. So one thing that I forgot to put in here is the date because we want to make sure, for example, to see the, um, the spend that we have for each time period. So in this case, for example, you could pull in the day column as well. And you see here it's a text format. And then, then we could use the parser as well. In this case, it's for 2021. Um, and here in the Facebook one, I would do the same as well. I believe it's date start. And you can see it's in here as well. And you have it in a different format, for example. And the idea is you can do any kind of transformation you want with these drag and drop nodes. So you could, for example, in here, if you, if you follow along, just use the date parser to parse a text field, how you would do it in SQL by getting uh, to date functions or in BigQuery, you can um, use those as well. You would select your source column, your target column, and then basically just define the format. So you can look at your input to just get an understanding of your data. And then you basically just write out the, the, the corporate. So in this case, it's day, day, month, month, year, year. And if you now wait for the output a bit, it will process that and actually create a date field that you can then reuse in your visualizations. So now you can see here, it's a date field. Um, and everything gets transformed into a date format as well. So we'll take a couple of seconds, just because we have a bunch of rows in here for the pre-calculation. And you'll see now here, it's, it's transformed into a different format. And we could do the same thing again in, in the Facebook one. So here we could add a date parser to it, um, transform the date functions here in the functions you can even generate constants. So you could have, um, for example, this one loading it quite a bit slow. You can, you can create other basically columns where you just say this, for example, the Google one, just for the sake of the time, because it took a bit longer here, I'll show you what a finished model would look like. Um, once this is loading. So here, for example, everything starts with like just having the Google Ads, selecting the fields. So in this case, it's cost, spend, and day. Um, you parse the day. You have text extraction nodes. You have functions that you can use. Um, and in the end here, this is what I meant before, where you, for example, want to tag a certain column as Google. And the last part where it's like usually just a union, you can union both data sets to have both the Facebook and your Google data in one place. Um, and that was the idea that, for example, Raycon had, right? And, and for them, it was quite a lot. Like, they had to write Python scripts. They had to make sure that everything works, attached with each other. And in here, it literally took them three to five minutes just pulling everything in, um, learning a bit more, and then just outputting it. And what you can see here is it's all version controlled as well. So if you look at the, the rollback model, we save basically all the models that you have. So if multiple people are working on it, somebody's taking over at some point, they get to see the version that you have. You can commit a different one, um, and you would see the differences as well. So in this case, if anybody's still doing it, um, I can change this to FB instead of Facebook once this is loading in. Save this one, and then go back to the output. If this one, and then you can see I can commit my change because something has changed now. So I would give it a title as like changing Facebook to FB. And once I commit that, it will uh, basically, similar to GitHub in there, um, just create a new one that is in there. And you can always roll back from that one as well. Here you can now see that I changed it to Facebook. And if you want to go back to this one, it would go back to having Facebook in there, as you can see here. And then you would commit it again, and then it would actually change the underlying data structure. The next part of, of that, I mean, if you, do you have any questions about that part? I mean, it's, uh, it's quite a lot to, to just intake right now. But um, we, we made it basically for business users to understand.
um, quite easily. But yeah, there's the next part is then the visualization where it's essentially um, what you already know. It's drag and drop, super simple for, for users to use. In this case, it's already an existing model. Um, if you go in there, you can add a widget, um, choose the data set that you have. So in this case, it's a demo model. And then just drag and drop your data in there to create the visualizations that you want to have. Um, for example, you want to see the date that is spent um, by date, broken down by the platform. So it's this way around. Um, I should think. Oh, I think, yeah, it's this way, sorry, it's segment of, um, segment by spend and then uh, segment by date and summarized by spend. And then you would see, for example, the year of the day will be um, 64K in Facebook and then uh, 14K in Google. If we do the other way around and just want to look at by month, then you can do that as well. So it's, it's that part you can have as well. Um, but yeah, so this essentially is, is the first part of the platform where um, you have all this, you can orchestrate this, you can, you can set up your directed asynchronous graphs and all of that. But I actually would want to go over now to the second part, which is actually using GitHub as, as the engine behind it. Um, and this one will, Hong will take over. Um, in just a second. Do you want to take it now? All right, thank you so much for um, yeah, taking a look at the previous version that we had. So, um, but here and just showed you yeah, the platform that uh, we uh, were running for the past uh, two years um, and the new platform that gets published now uh, within the next six weeks. Uh, I'm gonna quickly show it to you guys you know, like what's really happening in case you haven't been uh, to my talk. Um, what uh, is happening now is uh, in a you know, very brief, um, to, to showcase you guys. Um, we run an all-in-one uh, data workspace. And um, so we have an integration tool. Oh, sorry, one second. Yeah, to sum it up again, um, what you saw is uh, we try to cover the entire data pipeline uh, and make it very usable for business users. So we integrate with a lot of different tools, as you saw in, in the platform. We uh, have a UI modeling layer that Batian just uh, yeah, walked you over. You could use a native SQL uh, model as well to transform your data. You can visualize it. You can send the data back to other tools where you need it. Uh, and you have an orchestrator that's similar like Airflow uh, running on top of it. And you have like the data lineage and cataloging, which you, know, you can explore within the app uh, a bit as well. Um, so all in all, um, that's you know, the, the old version that you have access to right now. And it has a lot of different problems, right? Like for example, if you want to template stuff, um, under the hood, we run MySQL databases for each of these tools. So it's very hard to like roll back. Uh, the rollback that you just saw there was kind of saving different versions within MySQL and it's not very natively uh, integrated and also templating was super difficult. Like if you work on the same model right now as uh, Batian, you would keep overwriting him or he would overwrite you. And so a lot of you know, different problems come with this approach um, that we have. And this is why we decide to, hey, let's completely scratch all the MySQL data databases uh, and really run uh, Git uh, under the hood. And uh, I know there are a lot of people in here that probably haven't used Git uh, that, that much. Uh, basically, it's a version control system. Uh, Git is the reason why the open source community exists, uh, or at least version control. Before Git, there was something else. Right? And uh, it basically lets you collaborate uh, and work async with superpowers. And 
um, this is the reason why we're advancing so much right now in the software industry because of Git, of version control. And we want to take all of this power um, to our new platform and make it, you know, Git as a NoSQL data place, uh, make it a very native uh, integration, um, yeah, native part of our app. And running also Git under the hood means we are able now with the new version to extend to any tools um, of the modern data stack. So for example, integrations you already see, uh, we have Airbyte running um, alongside of our integrations, uh, now Fivetran. Now you, in the orchestrator, we can trigger now uh, an Airflow run and the Airflow run will get notified when you know, our orchestrator finishes and vice versa, uh, Airflow can trigger us um, and also we continue to have our UI model because that's very inclusive for the business user to work well with the technical users. Um, then you have also SQL model that also, yeah, you can write Jinja now uh, using dbt um, instead of, yeah. So you can run dbt uh, alongside with us, uh, visualizations, you know, you, we create tables in the data warehouse, so you can literally just plug and play with all the tables using Looker, Tableau, or our own visualization. Uh, we can, you know, send the data back uh, to like census, uh, like trigger census um, or trigger high touch or whatever um, within yeah, part of the platform. And now uh, what that allows us, and I'm going to quickly showcase you really the power of the platform now live. Um, so I'm already inside this data council space and this space here um, is already set up. It's connected to a repo called y, uh, y42 underscore data council minus db. And yeah, it's basically, uh, so it's connected to a Git repo. And what we do uh, with our new app is we build our own Git engine um, within the browser um, using WebAssembly. So what it does when we refresh the app, you will see that um, what's happening under the hood, and maybe I'm gonna open the console, um, we run Wasm Git under the hood and we cloning uh, the repo, the remote repository. We are checking out right now the current branches, the master branch. We uh, basically use the file system of the app under the hood and you can see it in the index DB here. Um, that's the, yeah, uh, basically all the Git repo, this Y42 uh, Y42 minus data council, um, yeah, in case, you know, like that's a structure, you know, uh, a lot of binaries uh, here uh, of Git um, that, that runs. And so now the power of this is really uh, whatever you do uh, within the UI, it gets committed to this repo. And I already cloned this repo. Um, that's not it. Let me open. I cloned this repo already uh, within my... Uh, within my local machine. I'm going to open it up. Uh, as a new window. So um, this is basically what you see. Um, and we're saving every data now within this uh, repo. And the interest, now let's uh, just, you know, uh, we are now on the master branch, okay? Um, and I'm gonna create a new integration. I'm gonna use the Google Ads integration. Uh, we use uh, and call it yo, yo, yo. So it's very recognizable. Um, and what really happens here is I'm actually committing right now um, the changes and we can check out the history. So I just come like I just created this integration and it's called yo 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 and I committed these changes uh, and two files ca called metadata and settings uh, dot JSON. You will you know understand it if you use our platform a bit more. So let me go to the uh, here. Um, this is GitHub desktop and I'm now going back to the master branch. I'm going to fetch. Um, and I'm gonna see, hey, I just committed these two files right here. So I have this also now on my local machine, uh, as you can see. And this is the, this yo, yo, yo thing that you just saw. Uh, now I have it within the repo, within my Git database, so to say, right? And what we can do now is it's an interplay between the, uh, the Y42 Bob that also commits to that data. Uh, so I, I'm gonna authorize myself now. And when I do, what's happening is um, we authorize ourselves, we send that token that we just you know, generated from uh, accessing, like giving access to uh, Google Ads. Um, and the back end, the Y42 bot basically takes it and commits uh, a secret, uh, like an encrypted version. So we can see it now in the history. Um, 
we just uh, committed a secret, and this is the Y42 bot that commits to that um, yeah, repo. Now, let's take a look. We don't have it here yet, right? Now, I'm going to uh, go here, and I'm going to pull the changes. And we can see immediately, hey, the Y42 bot just committed this one secret. Uh, now, we see it in here also. Everything that is .y42 is the folder that our backend basically commits to. And now, you're going to see in the next step, um, hey, um, we just loaded now the accounts. Because like now, I'm going to select one account. Um, and we can see also, again, what happens is we're really using it as a MySQL database. Uh, because now, the import starts. Um, like uh, we just committed the back end, the Y42 bot committed all the accounts that we have available for Google Ads to be able to select. Um, and yeah, uh, and then we can display that in the UI and so let the user select, hey, I just selected this Google Ads account where I want to import data from. Um, and uh, now I also, again, I selected that account and I selected the date when I started to, you know, like importing this data. So. Um, as you can see, it's an, an interplay between the web app committing to this one repo, between our, the Y42 bot committing to the same repo. Now, you see the Y42 repo just committed something again. The schema just loaded now. And this, are, like, this is the schema that could be dynamic, right? Like for MySQL integration, it could be different tables. It could be different columns. Um, and all of that really uh, was, yeah, um, completely uh, let me just quickly uh, pull the changes here again. And uh, I'm pulling the changes right here. So all of this you can see now, accounts and schema.json uh, was saved within the Y42 folder. And let me just you know, maybe import called, uh, an account called ad groups. Uh, let me commit that. So what I just did uh, was I committed the new file um, and we also ran a job now that takes the settings so from when should I start import the data, when, um, you know, what columns should we start importing. And all of that is streaming in here now. And you can see also, uh, again, going back to this folder and pulling again what's happening under the hood. Pull the changes. You suddenly see, hey, uh, there's a new table that we created called add groups. And there's a run, which is um, we take the request, which columns do I want to import, um, which table it is. And then it was created at this time. And right now, it's still pending. And let's go back in here. Uh, it's still pending, I assume. Let's ch check out the logs. Uh, finish table. OK, it should be done any second now. Fetching changes. Now it's done ready as you can see here so it also means that yeah it becomes green right here uh, let's go back to pulling the changes here and what happened is the import finish so it changes from ready to from pending to ready so it means we also commit all the jobs now within you know uh, this git repo and the power of it is hey I'm have this yo 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 change right here so let me uh, you know Go to another um, like branch to the uh, leave my now. Uh, let me what is that change? Oh, let me discard the change here. I'm switching to this branch now, and clearly this yo 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 account is not here, right? As you can see. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge the main the master branch, and we see hey, there's 11 commits for master that would merge to this branch. And I will just go ahead and do that. So you can see now um, this yo, yo yo account is right here available uh, in this new branch. And what we could change is like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm on the Baha'i branch, as you can see here. I'm actually going to switch it again, go to this branch. Uh, so I'm changing my IDE up here also. Um, I have to pull first. Yeah, now the yo 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 uh, should show up somewhere. There it is. Um, I'm just gonna change the naming of it here called uh, WhatsApp. And I will commit now this change.
And I'm doing it all from the UI here, so you can follow along the file structure. And you see, yo, 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 I'm just going to fetch it again. And it pulls automatically, so it becomes now WhatsApp um, at the same time. And um, yeah, I mean, I can continue showing you the whole platform, right? It's really, uh, everything is code now. So you can change anything in your IDE. It's all protected within your IDE uh, with JSON schema. So maybe I can quickly show it to you uh, within the visualization. So I have a dashboard right here. Um, global sales tracker, tag, like uh, sales, uh, I add it as a tag. Let me commit that. Merge new tag. Um, you see, I just added the tag sales in here. Commit that change. Um, we'll pull that change now. And I will go to the visualization, to the dashboards. Um, I think it was Clover Sales Tracker, yeah, this one. And so you will see the metadata JSON here um, that has this tax uh, and, oh, we fucked up something here. <laughs> uh, it should be the right JSON schema link. Uh, it would basically restrict me from, you know, removing properties here uh, that are not allowed. So there's some small issues here, but you get the idea. And um, the powerful thing of all of this is we have everything implemented, you know, within the UI. Like I changed something here. You see, I changed the name from this to this. And I have all the commands, um, the power of a CLI and of a, yeah, basically of Git. Uh, let's just maybe check out the Git status. So I edit the metadata here in Y42, my SQL. Right, and like in my demo, what I did was I stashed these changes and it reacts like the UI reacts to the commands that you're building, uh, like, yeah, that you generate here. So you see here, I have one stash change. Uh, I rename from this uh, to this. And so I want to discard this change because, yeah, I don't want that. Uh, so it stays like this. And with that, we, can, we also have our own uh, CLI. For example, uh, you can see here the Y42 uh, help you can generate new, um, yeah, new integrations, for example, um, and general uh, integrations. Um, let's check what we need. So uh, we have a couple of options here. Uh, integration, uh, name, description. Okay, all right. Then let me do uh, name some new integration. Um, of description of type MySQL and oh what did I do wrong integration So I just created now basically a new MySQL just using um, the CLI. And you can automate everything that you see with our uh, APIs as well. So maybe let's quickly do that. Um, let's go back to this WhatsApp that uh, we kind of like. So um, for that. I'm just gonna quickly take the, the token out of here so we can trigger the API. Um, so I wanna trigger, let's say, a new import. Um, I put in the right token. Um, let's see in what branch are we now. We are on the Baha'i branch, okay. Uh, I know it's company 141. This is, uh, okay. Now I wanna execute one command. Uh, now I need to find the location uh, of this integration, uh, which let's check out the path in here. It's the WhatsApp, uh, oh, uh, are we on the right? Yeah. Here, it's this one. So let's go integration. Yo, yo, yo. Uh, and it's the add groups. 
that I want to execute. Uh, doesn't look like it works. What's the problem? Uh, Oh, this is the one. Uh, put in the wrong repo. Now I'm going to execute that. Now it works. True. And I'm just going back here. I'm not doing anything. It's uh, fetching the changes. And basically, I'm triggering um, the API automatically to run another job. But it's not just about running the jobs. It's running everything programmatically within the Y42 platform. You can authorize yourself with integrations. You can trigger jobs. You can set up new orchestration, set up new visualizations. So the entire platform is fully enabled. Everything as code. You can use the CLI. You can use the, um, yeah, the UI to create it. You can use the um, uh, yeah, command line interface, the API. And uh, you can really run your entire data pipeline, um, programmatically code it, use the UI for it, all in one, extend it what, by whatever tool you need it to be. And we really think that by the end of this year, we will probably change the entire data industry significantly with this approach. Um, so yeah, you're very welcome to check out the new version in six weeks from now. Thank you.